Okay, this is now tarot lesson number four. Um, and it's a kind of continuation of before, because I'd like to look a little bit more at the Seven of Swords. But the word of the day is wonder. And I think if we spend time wondering, then we're going to have more to say about any particular card and we're going to be able to come up with meanings that are important or relevant or useful or valuable for the questioner at that time. So I think what we do is we look at a card and wonder about what's going on or why or what might be happening or how the, the situation came to be set up. We're not looking for immediate answers. But I think what you do is you ask, you look at the card and you wonder and then you pay attention to what you notice in life or in your life over the next few days or whenever whatever it happens to be, whatever time frame you're looking at. And you notice things that answer the kinds of questions that you ask the cosmos or that you ask yourself. So if you look at the Seven of Swords, um, we can wonder the fellow's got five swords here and there are two sticking up did he come across seven swords that were upright in the earth in the ground and he and he took as many as he could carry so that, that could mean that um, with somebody asks a question and so you've got the idea that the the whole answer is in front of them but they're not going to be able to get the complete picture or the complete answer, or they're not going to be able to take away with them all that's important. They're going to have to leave some things behind. And that can be an important idea that's part of the answer to the question that, that was asked. So yes, it's going to work, but you're going to have to leave some things behind. So maybe you take some time to think about what, what don't you really need and so even though we look at the picture and it's supposed to be theft, but we're looking at somebody, two things left and five things being taken off, taken away. Do you know what I mean? It's, and so we, we, by asking ourselves a question, wondering about what, what's going on here, and then maybe tomorrow we ask, that, we ask that question today, maybe tomorrow you're watching the news or reading a book or talking to somebody, and the person you're talking to tells you about how they found themselves in a situation and they couldn't take everything with them and they had they had trouble struggling to to figure out what to leave behind and you think oh we'll leave behind the seven of swords so you've got a, a little story or a little idea that you may or may not ever use with the Seven of Swords, but at least you've opened the channel or you've opened the idea or you've opened your mind to the possibility of the idea. And then when it's important or when it's the correct answer, you're going to remember it. And I think that's how a correct use of intuition. It's not so much that you make up something out of nothing, which is what a lot of intuition is, but it's more like you've spent time wondering about the card not trying to remember everything but maybe you write it all down um, and see what comes back to you or what pops into your mind at any particular time with during a reading or it may be that the questioner because we've got here so we've got the fellow on his own but back here there you've got a little campfire sorry i was looking at the camera there you will look um You've got a campfire and people there. So you, you, you wonder, was he part of this group? In which case, he's left and he's on his own. And why did he leave? Is it that he got fed up with the people? Or is it that he had, I don't know, why might he leave? And so you find yourself wondering, why might he leave? It, was he even part of the group? And so somebody can be talking about promotion or about something and they say something and you say, yes, but you have to remember you're on your own now. So why did you say that? Because maybe that group here in the background is the the 
the group of people that the person, the questioner was involved with, but he left them behind. And so it's important for you to realize now that you're on your own or that you've made a decision that, is, that, he, that has put you into a position where you've got to fend for yourself. So, and again, we're not trying to write that down as a meaning that we're going to then try and use every time we see the Seven of Swords. We're in the moment, we're relaxed about this whole situation, about reading cards, I mean. And so you trust your, or you learn to trust yourself that you're going to remember or that the idea, it's not that you're going to remember it, but the idea is going to come back to you when it's important, when it's relevant. So maybe we, we, we get, so we look at this Seven of Swords and we say, or we think, okay, you're on your own now. And so I picked out some other cards. Here's another, the Eight of Cups. This is also somebody on, on his or her own. So they, but this person is leaving behind an orderly situation, right? The five cups and the three cups, neatly arranged. And that, it's a bit, it's a very different atmosphere because here you put things in order and thought, okay, now is the time to move on. Here, in the, fact, the Seven of Swords, you're kind of rushing or maybe a little bit doubtful and wondering if it was the right move because of the, the, the fellows looking back. And maybe he's thinking about, maybe he should have kept brought one more sword. So maybe you should have taken something else or something more when you left the situation. Um, and then I got, I picked out the fool as well, because that's somebody on his own too, the fool. Um, but again, it's not the same. So we, we begin to see that being on your own can mean more than one thing. The other thing is it, the, we've got a person here and a person here, but being on your own can mean not just one individual. Maybe it's, if you think of a situation in, a, in an office where maybe they're gonna close a department, right? There's a small department of five people, right? So that department is now on its own or the people there are on their own because now they have to figure out, okay, how are we going to handle, what are we going to, be, what are we going to do about this change that's coming up? So we're going to lose our job or our position and we don't want to, so we're on our own. So again, the Fool and the Seven of Swords can represent, it doesn't always have to be one person. It can be a small department or it can be a large department. You know, it can be a company that's going out of business. So the employees are on their own as a group. Whereas you get something like, if I can get the card apart, the Four of Batons. So here we've got people and celebration. So this is, the, the, the difference between the Seven of Swords and the Four of Batons is isolation, self-preservation maybe in this one. Here it's about sociability and community and and getting along with people and being supported. And so maybe what you do is you begin to look at any particular card and think, okay, is this isolation or is it involvement with people? Um, and the other thing I thought to mention is um, wonder, right? The seventh major trump is a chariot, as we know. So in what, what's the connection between the chariot and the seven, the chariot's number seven, the, this card is a seven of swords. What's, what's going on between them? Is this seven of swords part of what the chariot is about or not? So I'll leave, the, I'll leave it at that for the moment, but wonder about everything, wonder about what's going on in pictures and what it might mean, not desperate to get an answer or not needing to have a complete or a conclusion or a definite answer, but just wondering and then pay attention to what you notice in the world. Um, how long is that? 10 minutes. 
I'll leave it at that. I, I had something else, uh, will I? Okay, so um, I, I should mention, I'll mention this now. Okay, so that's your understanding, right? Today, right now. And over the, the rest of the day and tomorrow, you're going to find that new understanding comes in Right, you notice something, you understand something, you learn something, you 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 have an idea about something, and at the same time, certain things are going to are going to leave. So something that you thought was useful last week, maybe you realise it's not that useful, and you'll never think about it again. So you're getting you're adding to your your understanding, but you're also subtracting from your understanding so that's today we're, we're, how, do, how do we represent your understanding tomorrow you could put another circle over here but somehow that is your understanding tomorrow it kind of overlaps because it's not like you wake up tomorrow and you're a totally different person right you've got the remains of yesterday are part of your understanding. So maybe what we do is, so we've got a slightly different understanding tomorrow. Th this all ties in with the idea of wondering, right? Because you can, you can wonder and come up with an answer that makes sense at that moment. But tomorrow it may not make the same sense or it may not make as much sense. So tomorrow we're going to also or continue to have new stuff coming in and some old ideas going out. So the phrase I want to use, I want to leave you with is, what are we going to do? I think what we do is we move the conversation forward. And if, if each circle are representing our understanding, think of it as a conversation. And if we can be every day moving the conversation forward a little bit, that's, that's a huge amount. And it's it changes everything okay so that was it for the moment um today's thursday um the 10th of march so uh i'm thinking thursday thursday friday saturday i'll be back on saturday or sunday so look for another video then and um in the meantime have a good day okay bye bye